Hello, uh, dear guests, dear colleagues. My name is Tatiana Ostrovskaya. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Hertha Institute for Historical Research on East Central Europe, also a historian of Eastern Europe. And I would like to welcome you at this book presentation. Uh, this is a joint book presentation of the HERA, which is a Herder Institute Research Academy, the network, postdocs uh, and doctoral students networks uh, um, organized and uh, uh, by, by the Herder Institute and um, HPSCC platform, as this is a virtual platform uniting historians of science of Eastern and Central Europe. And we actually did uh, already quite many presentations together. Uh, we started this, uh, the book launch as, as, as an event in 2020 when uh, pandemic, the pandemic uh, pre uh, started, uh, but we understood that it's actually a good format and we would like also to continue. And so this is actually the third season already. Uh, so you are very welcome. Uh, today we are presenting and discussing uh, the book published by the um, publishing house of the Herder Institute. Um, Jan Sormann, he is a editor of the book, uh, Science in an Interconnected German-Polish Scholarly Entanglements in Modern History, uh, published in the spring of 2022, very new. Uh, and we have also happy to, to have, of course, Jan here. Um, well, uh, other people are joining us, but also the commentators, and I will introduce them in a second, and also other contributors to this uh, collected volume are also here. So, um, Jan will be, uh, as editor, is, will be uh, talking about the book, he will present the conception, and then we have, we are ha very happy to have two commentators, uh, Zaur Gassimov, who is a, uh, who is working at the University of Bonn, uh, he is a principal investigator there, uh, he has his own project on, uh, also on the history of sciences. Um, and Justina Turkovska, she's a lecturer, a D, um, D, a, a D lecturer at the University of Edinburgh, and she wrote her dissertation on the uh, history of medicine in, uh, in, um, in Poland, if I'm not mistaken, which was also uh, prized uh, and awarded. Uh, and um, yeah, she, actually, we, we also presented Justina's books, uh, book two years ago. So, um, and so I'm very happy now to, uh, to give opportunity to talk, uh, to, to, for Jan, uh, sorry, to give opportunity Jan to speak. Yeah, Jan, uh, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Tatiana. And uh, thank you all for, for being here. And especially thank you as Aura and Justina for uh, agreeing to be commentators. Uh, I will share my screen. You should see the presentation now, right? Yeah. Uh, so thank, thank you very much. And uh, you, you already saw the cover and I was wondering actually how many of you did realize that we advertised the book under completely false title. Uh, in all the advertisements which we did, uh, the title was Science Interconnected German Polish Scientific Entanglements in Modern History. Uh, now you, here you see the, uh, the correct title, the Scholarly Entanglements. Uh, and actually, discussion about scholarly and scientific and all the other terms uh, were also very vital to what was happening first at the conference, uh, which actually was, was the basis of the, of the volume. Uh, and even before that led to the conference. Uh, so I also wanted on this page to thank Herder Institute for uh, hosting the conference, which was, I think, 2014. It was, you know, before COVID, before the war. It was really a long time ago. Uh, and the Czech Science Foundation for uh, helping to sponsor one of the chapters, which is fine. Uh, so I will tell only a few words uh, about the conception. And uh, I think more we can, we can then discuss in the, uh, in the discussion. 
Uh, also because I'm only one of the editors and I will say something more about this also. Uh, and uh, I cannot, first, I cannot speak for all the editors. Uh, and second, uh, I cannot speak, of course, for all the authors. And so I can speak only for myself. Uh, and for myself, I made a few choices. So I'm the head editor. Uh, and probably like first of the choices which we saw is that we have a very strange cover with a, it's not really a doodle, but, but something similar on a cover, uh, which actually is, uh, it's notes uh, by a scholar of Polish culture, Polish background uh, from lectures in Berlin in mathematics in 1810. Uh, so basically already the, the choice of the cover uh, should symbolize that we are actually trying to not really talk about science as it's being done very often. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of professors meeting in one place. So if you, you know, try to look at uh, different books talking about scholarly entanglement, scientific entanglements, and so on and so on, and we'll try to visualize it, it's always like conferences and a lot of male heads getting together. Uh, so from the very beginning on, we wanted to do something different. Uh, and to do something different, uh, we also recruited uh, a team of scholars at the very beginning uh, who were pro uh, preparing the conference and then uh, and then preparing the volume, uh, like peer reviewing the articles before they were going to peer review editing it and so on and so on. Uh, and our main idea is that uh, our scholars have different backgrounds, uh, which in this case would not only mean that they have, you know, are only at German and or Polish institutions, uh, but for example, uh, gender balance, which if you look at history of science, it's still a problem in, you know, both Germany and Poland. And if you look at entangled history, in entangled history as well. Uh, so here we see, you know, what we came up with, uh, which is still not as balanced as we would like to, but it's, uh, we hope it's a good step in, in one direction. Uh, and also the scholars are from different disciplinary backgrounds. So it's not only, uh, we have historians of uh, natural sciences, we have historians of human sciences, we have uh, historians who uh, refuse to identify themselves as historians of as science or as scholarship like myself. Uh, and uh, so this, this was like one of the you know, you know, key concepts for us. The second one, uh, the question of entanglement. And the question of entanglement is tricky because the term does function uh, very differently in very different scholarly communities. Uh, it can be in German Verflechtungsgeschichte. It is also linguistically, uh, which has a long history of publications being written about it. German, Deutsch Polnische Verflechtungsgeschichte. Uh, you know, look, if you look at the catalogs, uh, you will see that, you know, there is like 20, 30 books about it. Uh, there is Histoire Quasi, which sometimes gets translated as entangled history. Uh, and especially, you know, in the last, let's say, six, seven years, there's like a bunch of books, which is uh, dealing with entangled history of scholarship, entangled history of Eastern Europe, Central Europe, uh, empires, and so on and so on. Uh, we were there a little bit before. So the conceptualization was 2014. Uh, and the conceptualization is also a transfer of a certain discussion, which is happening. It is actually happening in Paris, but it's happening about uh, the question of how to uh, work with science in uh, East Asia uh, and how to work with this science as a science which is connected with this, you know, as a part of global science. Uh, Kapil Raj, who was one of our keynotes during the conference, uh, is a person who uh, shaped the concept of entangled history over the last, I would say, since, since 2007. So we have his book here uh, from 2007 uh, uh, until now. Uh, and we were you know, trying to exactly look at this. So uh, one of the key aspects of this, which is also very important for us, uh, is that it doesn't try to essentialize categories, which we are talking about, uh, but looking at the practices, tries to look how they are differently situated in time and space. Uh, it worked sometimes in 
some, some of the articles. Uh, it is a methodological uh, endeavor. It is a you know long road in you in which you have to you know question what is Polish at a given time, what is German at a given time, uh, what is entangled at a given time, what is science at a given time. So and then try to express it in English. So you know there is a lot of translations which are happening in this process. Uh, and if you want to know more about the theoretical background, I wrote a, a very small introduction, which had to be divided into two because it was too long. It was like almost 100 pages. And now it's a small theoretical introduction and a bit longer introduction. The uh, German Polish entanglements, the introduction is both in the volume and uh, in a text version in open access. You can write me or you can find it on my academic. Uh, so I cannot really, you know, tell more of what's happening there. But here we also see uh, the variety of articles, the variety of topics. Uh, it ranges from uh, history of philosophy in the beginning of the 19th century uh, to uh, history of through history of chemistry to the history of uh, archaeology. Uh, and history of Copernicus, who's of course the most important uh, person slash object for the Polish German history of science. Uh, so you, you have it here. And uh, as I told you, we're trying to make a balanced volume. Uh, we didn't quite accomplish it. Uh, so we also tried to reflect on it, how we didn't really accomplish it uh, in the final discussion, a discussion which was uh, between me Dieting Hütger, uh, Katrin Stefan, and Joanna Lovjuniak uh, about the question of you know, how to escape uh, the West male centric historiography while writing history of sciences. Uh, so, this is like you know, a great discussion uh, which is printed also here, uh, and it like kind of sums up uh, our also the road which, which the volume has taken. Uh, and maybe the last point which I wanted to say is that many of our publications, uh, the, I mean, many of the chapters represent works which are uh, bigger. Uh, here are just two examples, uh, Friedrich Kain's Wissen im Hintergrund and Katrin's, Katrin Steffen's Blut und Metall. Uh, the short versions of their uh, books are in the, uh, in, in the volume, the, the longer books, uh, like more developed chapters. Uh, to say it like this, uh, were published in the last two years. Uh, so, you know, also in, in case you are interested in exactly this, you can find such an version there. And there's like also other topics which are you know, already more developed, but I'm also very happy that our book, even before it actually uh, appeared, already was part of uh, a scholarly discussion uh, because we also circulated the preprinted manuscripts. Uh, and now I'm looking forward to, to the comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jan. Uh, it's, it's really an impressive volume and especially impressive uh, that you managed uh, to, to put together, to, to bring together so many um, interesting texts, so many interesting reflections, studies, and so many interesting scholars together. And probably the people who, as you said, not do not identify themselves as uh, purely um, uh, scholars. Um, yes, I would like to uh, now probably to ask Justina to start with her comment, uh, if it is okay with you, Justina, would you like to start? And then after her, um, so we, 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 we saw that maybe about 10 minutes we will give to each commentator and then we will open the floor also to the discussion and comments from the public. So please, Justina. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for um, having me here. And thank you very much, Jan, for bringing such an important topic as the German-Polish scientific relation, the challenges and perspective to our attention. Um, my breaking down of the classical narrative of 
center periphery of to, or, or to paraphrase Sova by breaking down with the narrative of the Polish internal imprisonment of the logic of catching up with the West and escaping the West in the context of the Polish-German asymmetrical changing relation. This volume um, we're discussing here today um, offers a multi-layered view of the German Polish entangled history and its heterogeneity by presenting as a site of both, right? Of positive creation of transgressing identities as, as practices and as a site of this negative creation of difference and raptures. And both as several contribution in the volume demonstrated were constitutive to the, for the diffusal power structure, um, communication and the creative potential of the scientific interconnectedness of the elites. The later um, lived on the political, societal, cultural changeability and were often defined by very different affiliation um, than just the national and shaped by ongoing negotiations of the opportunities and struggles of daily life and positioning within the globalized academic community. Um, that in the German and Polish case for a very long time was characterized by multinational, multilinguistic, multi-confessional connections and divisions and shaped by multi-lying state, institutional and cultural um, affiliation. The later are some of the contribution convincingly demonstrating among others, the case of Czochralski presented by Katrin Steffen, could be both, could unfold a certain innovative potential of science, but could also slow it down or limit at a certain historical moments. So without taking up the individual contributions and without praising the band and a, or the volume any further, since uh, since the structure of the volume and the main objectives uh, were already presented by you, Jan, I would just like to focus or actually to take up the final chapter of the volume, um, the, the conversation between uh, Julian, Litnin Krystkel, Katrin Steff, and Joanna Babzeniak that address our research, our research angles as gender perspective, race, and intersectionality, and take it up what perhaps correspondent nicely with, with your last remark, Young, about the follow up of the volume, to take it up um, less for a commentary or the volume, but more for a reflection um, about additional uh, methods and approaches that could be used to make the complexity of the German Polish knowledge history more visible. And by doing it, I, or by doing so, I would like to take up or address three points of many more that the volume highlighted and that are central for narrating the history of scientific entanglements. So by taking such categories like gender, race, and particular intersectionality more strongly into account as you as you as you've done it in the or by the conversation and um, in the last chapter, um, you not only broader and differentiate, differentiate our view of the historical experiences of, of the analyzed actors and encounters, but above all, this approach could help us to deconstruct the master narrative and understand how, which, and whose politics were how made and powerful, why they gain a central power in that and no other historical moments, and how this moment changed. And especially the last point seems to be central to me as the temporality and um, situationality of historical constructs is constitutive for be it religious, national um, identity, cultural practices, or spatial images that are such important for scientific and scholarly self-identification, contextualization, and it even if temporary or always only temporal stabilization. But let me start with the intersectionality and exclusions, as you mentioned it uh, in, in the conversation and make it such strong, especially the intersectionality, uh, intersectionality of exclusion. And um, to provoke a little bit, I would just ask, you to elaborate this point a little bit more as for once exclusion and the post-colonial approach you choose at least to some degree only fit together to a limited extent and um, secondly um, again to, to ask a little bit provocatively to what extent it could be fruitful to take the intersectionality of exclusion for the starting point of storytelling on scholarly history of course one's position within the structural spatial concepts of performing sciences has always been determined by the current logic of power and thus inclusion and exclusion and no one deny it and it's part of the narrative and for sure it, it reached narratives of the complex um, logistical human, non-human undertaking called science um, that is, of course, not shaped only by some expertise, but also by political, social, cultural values. However, 
wouldn't a stronger focus on um, or, or intersectionality of exclusion tend to make the marginalized the center and end up writing in history of marginalization rather than the ongoing process of making and unmaking sciences? Or to provoke for the further time, what it could what it could tell us more about the German Polish knowledge history than, for example, some praxeological history or history told through the angle of everyday encounters and practices that, of course, are also partly discriminatory. Um, so more than the than the yeah history of the everyday practices on the ground, especially if we consider the practices in the nature are fragile, situative, and temporal. What brings me to, um, to some further point about, or back actually to the point I've already made about the situationality and temporality of historical constructs um, as constitutive for scientific networks. Uh, so how can the ongoing process of finding temporal stability um, be approached and the struggles and opportunities or the already mentioned connections and divisions that might resonate with those who called science their home reflected and pushed as narratives into the fold. I mean, the temporality is always underestimate under and, um, and not visible of the, moment, of the moment of being since what it, uh, that which is handed down and um, solidified by, by the historiography appears in stable forms, right? However, it's the temporality that determines daily confirmation of scientific construction. Or to put it in a more broadened perspective, uh, it's not only about temporality as term or short termness, but in general about the role of time, past, present, future, and its velocity in the history and for centile continuity, ruptures, and changes. So, how can the can the pluritemporality of historical processes, as Chakrabarty called it, be captured and considered by writing the German Polish scholar entanglements? or to go even farther and think in the category of timescape or zeitschaft, which is very prominent by Landwehr, how can one grasp the less chronological and certainly not linear, but nevertheless temporarily organized references of, of a central group of people to see the past in a central way and to refer to futures in a central way? So how can such a timescape be captured in narration of, a, of the entangled history? By talking about time, it's crucial to reflect some further aspects that would still be exciting and, and they were addressed in the volume, for example, in the contribution of the Eva Manikowska, uh, namely the ruptures and crisis of communication or if, if, if you wish, the, the competition between narratives. However, not the competition as such, but again, the rupture at crisis within the scientific exchange. Um, to add a little bit the history, the, the micro history or the history of emotions seems to be a key topic unexaminated. So how did the crisis shape the navigation of the complex German Polish entanglements and neighborhoods? And how did the trans-regional or over-regional neighborhood stitch together communities and communicative infrastructures by accumulating everyday acts of provisioning of scientific lives? And the last but not least, or the last point I would like to mention, corresponding with the temporality, discontinuity, and provisioning of scientific life would be the global dimension. So it's not really, um, it's, it's not um, really surprising, not really new, it's perhaps even very banal. Um, however, as you state, um, throughout the volume, um, or starting with, with your, uh, theoretical chapter, Jan, right, that even with national categories in mind, the entanglements in Central Europe were not bilaterine and certain binarity um, of relation, especially when we talk about Polish-German entangled history is, of course, inscribed in the nature of the field of study. Um, however, as the contribution, for instance, uh, of Piotr Köhler and the Polish-German context in botany shows, they shows the necessity to look beyond the bilateral relations in order to understand the network standing behind the knowledge and the object circulation. So uh, the challenge would be perhaps for, or for, for historical research in general and, and the Polish-German relation in particular, how can we try to understand how numerous spatial processes was, were enrolled into somebody's life and what limit of power, imperial power, colonial power, asymmetrical power, uh, or power relation daily practices when, when 
engendered by such processes. And as, as, as Catherine Steffen pointed out in, in, um, in her contribution, basically every scientific relation, especially those embodied in this national context, or, or let's say the nationalist is always connected, connected to the perception of globality. Um, as he showed that achievements of Poles or in Poland were always measured against the question of, um, of whether they brought progress to the world or not. Um, and this is um, and this is a point that perhaps we could just reflect a little bit farther about and, um, and that this volume already introduce um, as being a first great step demonstrating the potential of bilateral history and how it can be seen not only as a translocal history, but how and one insights and give into the larger context. So again, it was less the commentary on the volume as such, but more a reflection on how could we think it farther and how could we use some categories mentioned, especially in the in the in the last conversation as a starting point for where furthering or reshaping the, the entangled history. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Justin. It's really thought provoking. Jan, um, have you written <laughs> some some notes down? Yes, yes. Maybe we'll uh, first give words to uh, Zaur. Yes, uh, then you will comment in general. Um, please, Zaur. Uh, yes, yeah. is yours. Thank you, thank you so much, mm -hmm. uh, Tatiana, and thank you so much uh, for invitation. Uh, yeah, I will. I will start. I can uh, second uh, uh, many aspects uh, Justina already mentioned in in her presentation. Uh, it's an amazing um, volume, and I um, uh, I spent my time with 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 a with a volume reading the uh, that this is a very um, 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 that starts with these two uh, two um, long um, uh, articles of Jan, um, and I found that very interesting that Jan introduced in the um, way how the volume emerged uh, from the conference, and it was a very nice, uh, by the way, report on um, how a book can emerge being a chapter uh, within of uh, of writing of this uh, Polish uh, German or German Polish uh, scientific um, um, uh, entanglement. Um, so it was um, um, all articles uh, depicted different aspects um, um, of this very multi-dimensional um, entanglement um, and. and um, and it was like you you had the feeling that um, there were also very intensive years uh, from the conference in 2015 and until the uh, the book emerged now. So the very very uh, dense um, um, cooperation of a maybe can be called also a Denk Collective. So a notion that that is a very intensively used also in the volume. Uh, so that is a very very uh, very nice. Uh, nice aspect um, another aspect i i wanted to uh to touch is the pioneering uh, character of the uh, of the work i mean there are a lot of publications uh, jan mentioned them also also in his um, short introduction um, um tonight that uh, there is a number of book uh, written on the uh, polish uh, german uh, interaction um but uh, this kind of book is somehow pioneering the um, theoretical um, background of of the interaction in the field of science uh, academia and and beyond uh, one could one could add here um i found that um also um very interesting to see that this um from the first uh, maybe a uh, point of view uh, seeming uh, bilateral. Um, I mean, we have here two uh, at least uh, national categories, uh, Germanness and then Polishness. But uh, even looking at the book as a result of this, um, of this intellectual work, amazing intellectual work, you see that it's very international that uh, crosses the borders of, of uh, two national uh, categories. And um, 
so that was um, um, not only the the um, uh, the authors of the book, but also the uh, topics uh, they have touched um, uh, inside of the book. Um, I found the um, the articles um, in a very positive sense, uh, provoking thinking on um, on multi multi-dimensionality of this interaction so it's not only about political history it's not about uh, transfer uh, cultural or, or um, uh, uh, transfer of knowledge from one part to another but it was um, about the fields which are uh, really demonstrate how broad the spectrum was and is so starting with Plato and, and uh, coming to botany and to uh, medical journals and to the uh, uh, circulation, to the circulation of ideas inside of them. And then also we have also this intellectual, intellectuals on the move. And uh, as Jan also mentioned, the uh, question of, um, of um, uh, nationality, of language also um, can be posed or reposed again and again. Um, what is the Polishness uh, or what is the relationship between the Polishness of the text uh, written somewhere outside of Polish lands? Um, by the way, very nice example of, of uh, uh, Copernicus or Copernic, uh, where the issue of the language shows also the multidimensionality even of, of, of his uh, life and work. Uh, so uh, in the aspect of neither uh, Germanness nor Polishness, but something third. So this third aspect or third space plays here also a, a very uh, prominent role. Uh, but um, yeah, having read um, having read the articles, I thought that um, the notion that um, you see again and again in 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 the contributions it was the aspect of asymmetry, uh, very strong, and uh, it has of course uh, its own relationship. Maybe the main focus on on uh, subalternity and on on postcolonial character in the Polish German uh, uh, relationship, but also um, that would be my question. Uh, um about the um, other spaces inside of these two spaces if we would uh, now classify as the um, german debates discourses um, like the uh, uh, discursive landscape as this course uh, and the polish one which uh, crossed the borders the borders were very blurred uh, they came in a dialogue uh, in many forms, in a written way, in, uh, as a part of, of uh, common um, uh, conferences, even in the 19th century. And uh, um, where is there, like the historical landscapes in the Polish lands in the 19th century, um, what role of these non-Polish maybe areas inside of the Polish lands, like in the 19th century, if we talk about uh, uh, Lithuania or uh, partly also about uh, um, uh, Ukraine with this regard, uh, what kind of role they played inside of this, uh, um, let's say, like, like assumed as, as two main categories. So this um, other aspects of the, uh, of the interaction um, and uh, my other um, uh, observation was, and I found that very, very interesting. Um, now I have to find something, something uh, critical or something that provoked me in a, in a, um, uh, also in another way that catched my, uh, my eye was that the titles, uh, the German titles were not translated into English by the Polish one, uh, the Polish ones uh, were. And uh, that is also a very interesting aspect, I guess, that shows that uh, uh, this book is a um, very, very uh, interesting chapter itself in the uh, Polish-German interaction, uh, scientific interaction. Uh, Jan mentioned also the uh, Englishness of the, of the uh, let's say, uh, end result uh, and of the edited volume. So the authors uh, 
articulated their ideas and articulated their encounters on the German-Polish uh, interaction uh, through the English language. But uh, this aspect with the difference uh, in the attitude of the translation, uh, translation of, uh, of non-English uh, text, I found that very, very interesting. Uh, it's, um, um, I'm far, far, far uh, from uh, um, describing it as, as, um, as um, good or bad. It's just very interesting to observe. So it's like, it's a very vivid book. It's very vivid book. Book and the book gives like um, um, makes one to uh, think a lot and to rethink many aspects maybe with which uh, one operated uh, before having read it. So I would uh, I would put a stop at this moment and thank you very much again for for an amazing amazing job you've done. Yeah, thank you so much, Saur. Um, so I would like to ask Jan now to answer probably the questions and maybe to reflect on the comments. And we also have uh, contributors to the volume. We also have co-editors here in the audience. So uh, uh, if you like to say something, just to, to jump in uh, with your comments, if something that was said to provoke also you on thinking further on, please jump in. And also we have chat, uh, so please do write your questions and comments in the chat on. So, um, but first, Jan. Thank you very much for both comments. I cannot address all the issues uh, which were, I think they, you know, we'll, we'll be talking about it probably for the, for the next days and months uh, on different venues, in different venues. Uh, I was actually just checking about, I know that we didn't translate the titles in the, Footnotes, the German ones. Uh, I thought we did in the text, but now I see we didn't. So we, yes, and this is, uh, I did know it. I mentioned it to the publishing house. Uh, some fights are not worth fighting, I would say, uh, or at least we're not at the time. Uh, so yeah, I, in my, you know, uh, it is apparently international practice. And we, which is also, we, we, which, we, it is also like German, French, and I think I'm mean, still Latin, and I'm not sure about Italian whether Italian gets translated or not anymore. Uh, so Harry Institute ap uh, applies here to the international standard, uh, and I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, spaces. Um, th this is kind of a thing which I hope we will have discussed more, but we didn't. I discussed it a little bit in the. Uh, in the introduction, uh, but also from the, exactly with the question that we actually don't really, you know, the problem is that we have to be also very conscious when we include the spaces, how we include them uh, in order not to be hegemonic by ourselves. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it like this. So, so in, in order, you know, uh, not not to try to uh, force the spaces into a discussion in which they were, for example, not. They are also spaces which don't participate. And we should also take into account that they also don't participate. But this is, I mean, by the time I retire, I think there, there will be already publications like this, but I think it's a kind of long way, at least in the history of science. Uh, which is open in very many regards, uh, not that open in other ones. Uh, and this, this kind of brings me to, uh, to Justina's comment and uh, to many, many things that we actually have to think of. And this is like, uh, I'm very happy that we recorded it. Maybe we can you know, put it as a kind of uh, extra video uh, for people to think about. Uh, because yes, these this are you know, many questions which, which uh, I didn't ask myself all these questions uh, 10 years ago or eight years ago when I was writing these things or six years ago when I was rewriting them and so on and so on. But yes, I mean, also several things change in between. For example, 
the post-coloniality I'm writing about in the text, first of all, it's kind of a, it, it is a post-coloniality which was post-coloniality at the time. And it is a post-coloniality which very influenced by subaltern studies. Uh, however, not in the reading of culturalizing subaltern studies, which is the reading that for some reason appears to dominate in, in Central and Eastern Europe. It is rather a reading which kind of combines, uh, you know, subaltern studies with the early discussion on the colonial studies uh, of the Spanish or, you know, from, the, from, the, from uh, Latin America. Uh, which would be now one part of the decolonial studies, but certainly not the mainstream of the colonial studies. Yeah, so uh, exactly. Uh, and this part of postcolonial studies understood like this actually kind of works very well uh, with the question of entangled history, uh, because it's also about uh, the question of the essentializing basically everything that's happening. I know that there is a postcolonial studies where we're re-essentializing, uh, subaltern identities, but this is exactly not what I what I intended. Uh, we intended exactly the other way around. Uh, and maybe two more points. The the, the first point, how uh, I see the future, which kind of works with with what you said, but it's also a question of methodology. Uh, and my answer is. It is a kind of ironical answer of, uh, you know, apparently Foucault had a positivist face and I might, why not being Foucault, I might be in my positivist face at this moment. Uh, the idea of entanglement, which is mentioned in the volume is very Latourian. Uh, and it's, you know, works with, with, with networks. So, so basically the idea, which I'm trying to follow now, is that you have uh, an, event or an a result. Uh, and from this result, you look at networks uh, which made this result happen. Uh, and these networks are not only, of course, people, they're actants. Uh, they are also not, uh, they, 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 they don't uh, work in a national way. However, they might be structured by national categories. Uh, but we cannot tell it when we start the research, we have to look what is happening. Uh, and the funny thing is that I'm not the first person who is saying this. Kaviraj was also saying this and you know, several, at least in the history of science, several people said that this is actually the way to go. They never published the results because as soon as you start uh, following networks like this, the network, networks don't end. And you always run the risk that you, you know, don't see a very important part. Uh, and these networks are, I mean, th this comes from, uh, from post-colonial studies, from global studies. And the, the question there is also like with, with sources, uh, I'm sure it, I mean, you're, you're aware of it. Uh, and exactly most of people, you know, wrote theoretical treatises about it and never fulfilled the promises. Uh, me too, by the way. So. Uh, now we are doing it in Polish Czech, uh, Czech examples, uh, when we also you know, have very nice theory behind it. And we, in, in two, three years, we can speak about what, what kind of results we got. Uh, but exactly there, we have the question of intersectionality. We have the question of power. Uh, we have the question of dealing with narratives and so on and so on. Uh, also the question of you know, how we deal as historians with the narratives that we have. Uh, and with this, I wanted to add uh, one thing, uh, the last thing, I, I, which will be in the reaction, is uh, that uh, Azaur mentioned, uh, uh, I mean, there is this long history about German Polish entanglements, uh, and we actually don't build on it. Uh, the reason for it is that this history of discussion on Polish German entanglements is part of the history. It's both part of history and part of historiography. Uh, so what we wanted to do is like, you know, let's go away and try try a different uh, different solution. Because also this discussion was always happening between German and Polish historians in a certain political context uh, from after 1989, uh, in a different political context, but it was exactly happening. Uh, and the second thing is that uh, I found it like, like if we talk about tangible results, 
Uh, one of the results that I that struck me uh, when I was writing my, my, my part was that there is like immense amount of narratives how historians were connecting, building bridges, and so on and so on. And as soon as you look at what was happening in history, it's like historians were very late about it, but they were very loud about it. Uh, and you know, this is exactly why I see also historization as something that is necessary. Uh, especially as the historian of science, is that you know our way of thinking about entanglements, German Polish, is that humanities and uh, and historians especially played a very big role because every historical publication you write about it is of course, but historians only write about historiography and about humanities. I mean, there is not many historians who looked, for example, what was happening in geology, which was one of the you know earliest moments when when the cooperation starts. Uh, or uh, you know, uh, biological science, environmental science. So in order to have this, uh, you know, we we, we have to uh, maybe not forget about this narrative which we have. I mean, received narratives we cannot really escape them, uh, but we have to be very careful uh, what we do with them. Uh, okay, that I was res responding for ten minutes. I think that's enough. No, I think it was less than ten minutes. Yeah, um, uh, I would. Um like uh, to ask once again authors and contributors uh, and co-editors is anyone wanting to add something um no i don't see any reaction so we have one question uh, one hand uh, from uh, jan volensky uh, jan do, would you like to okay okay yes so, uh, so you know i was asked to uh, write a review of this book for one Polish journal. So I am from the position okay. of a reader. The first of all, this one scandal, lack of personal index in this book. So I think that in this, in such books, indexes, index, at least personal index, maybe not subject, is obligatory. And I don't understand this. And now, well, I am a philosopher and a lawyer. And uh, so this is a problem for a reader because most of the papers, there are, very, there are some of them uh, in philosophy uh, are so short that they are not quite, you know, important for such readers like me, for example. I am a student of Roman in Gardens. There's a paper on in Garden, which is simply very, very poor. Also about Fistek, a logician. I understand that there's a problem of size, but I would, would recommend in the future more monographic. Uh, volumes because for me it's you know like what i can say about medicine botany and such things simply i had to omit in my review but on the other hand these uh, studies which really interest me are too short in order to to comment However, I guess that Polish-German relations are extremely important because I think that no other, maybe except French commun scientific community was so important for Poland as, as Germany for many reasons. And the last remark uh, is that on the other hand, this volume is important because due to very stupid anti-German policy of present Polish government, such initiatives are extremely important. And so it is very good that this volume appeared in this time. However, uh, you should consult more specialists in science on science uh, when you come to such enterprises. In Poland is a great tradition of uh, science on science. In fact, we had 
the first specialized journal, Nauka Polska, Polish Science, which began to be edited just after the First War. Very, 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 very yeah, important. excuse me, uh, can you wrap so, up your question that we yes, have also space know. for? Mm -hmm. I know, but the last remark is okay, but you know, if you invite several persons, so one hour is not very much for discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, Jan, would you like to answer directly? Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I can answer very briefly. So the personal index uh, was a decision uh, which we made with the publishing house because there's only a few names which are actually uh, repeating themselves in different chapters. Uh, so this is why we then decided not to do it. Uh, uh, the very chapter about Roman in Garden is now also a dissertation. Uh, and hopefully will be soon a book. So exactly this, you know, it, it goes the direction of, uh, you know, developing into a, into a mono, monographical ways. And uh, I'm sure that as soon as we have it, uh, we will send it to uh, Studia Historia Sincerium. I suppose that this is the journal uh, which you mentioned uh, for the review, and I'm very happy that it will be written there. And if it will be written somewhere else, I'm also very happy about it. Uh, I'm aware of the discussion on science of science in Poland. Uh, you know, following all the conferences which are happening, and uh, it is also a very, very interesting term. I mean, I'm, I'm now writing about actually about kind of circulations which are happening in the science of science from you know early 20th century and up until the 90s. So this, this is like a for me, my personal story what will happen next with the ideas of circulation, and then there is Czechs which are playing a role, Poles which are playing a very important role. Uh, Different Germans who are playing the role, you know, also entangled Germans and so on and so on. So uh, I'm, I'm following this with this very closely. Uh, and, and yes, it's actually like very, very interesting how uh, this book came up in a moment when, you know, there's Polish German tensions. Uh, however, and this is like, I mean, very often when I, when I write books and, and introductions, I change introductions uh, depending on the context. Uh, and here, I mean, like, you know, the context now is very different than a year ago when, when this, you know, all the, the thing was finished. Uh, but the context which was very important for me, and it also, the context from which the conference itself developed, is uh, invisibility of Polish scholars uh, and uh, connections with Polish history uh, in the German mainstream uh, history and history of science. Uh, this is why, you know, at the very, very beginning, I put the statistics. Uh, I mean, that the numerical entanglements are very strong, and they were strong in history. But if you look at literature, at uh, public media, they're like really very invisible. You know, you, you would imagine that in history, in, in sciences, uh, there is like, you know, no common border, no connections. It, it also has something to do with uh, a lot which happens in connection with Poland being, uh, let's, let's use, I will use the word marginalized in history of Eastern Europe as a discipline within, uh, within historical sciences. Marginalized not in the sense that it's uh, provincial, I don't, I, I, you know, not really, not really uh, sure which word to use, but the problem is that specialists in Polish history will be in the networks of Eastern European uh, historians. They will be, uh, you know, uh, they will be seen as such also. I mean, I had it as a, uh, as a historian of science working with Eastern Europe, but not being in the networks of Eastern European historians, but being in the network of historical science, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that we had problems being visible and problems uh, being, seen as a part of a narrative. Uh, I mean, it, it changed over the last years, uh, but it, it was also a long process. And it's also a process, it is by the way, not a German process at all. It also happens, for example, in the States, uh, where historians of science working on Poland or Czechoslovakia, they will not come to history of science society meetings. They will be at the 
meetings of uh, Slavists, uh, which, which is like, you know, very ironic because then they are also complained that they are not, not visible in history of science society. So, so, you know, this book is also kind of a work on you know, trying to connect uh, historical part, parts of historiography, which not always speak to each other. And I think the like, history of science and history of Eastern Europe have uh, a very rough history, uh, which is you know getting more and more interconnected. But uh, it has to mean a little bit more work on both sides and in between. Mm. Thank you very much. I don't see any other questions. Are they? No. So. I think we will then maybe wrap up, uh, maybe for the for the like finalizing. Can you uh, can you tell us how it's actually practical looked like? So did you have to struggle with with a uh, with a publishing house to you know for for this very unconventional book, and also how did you manage to bring together all the authors which are also very different, and uh, to agree on the concepts. So the work with publishing house was, I think like all work, works with publishing house when there is always uh, things you can comment on, uh, but you know, uh, there was nothing unusual, I would say. Uh, even with, you know, up until choices of, of the cover. Uh, working with authors and, you know, connecting out, it, it is in a way a volume coming out of a conference plus additional output. Uh, and, you know, it's also, you know, it, it was a process with, with heavy editing. And I think that that is like, this is exactly the thing that, you know, before the volume was edited, it went through be like every other article being uh, commented by me, reworked by the author. Uh, then, you know, then we had our internal peer review and then we had external peer review. And I will not say which articles they were, but there are articles on which we worked for a very long time. Uh, you know, up until uh, I think two people wanted to add me as a co-author. I, I am a heavy editor, yeah. Uh, because we were also like discussing uh, key concepts which were used uh, in order to make them uh, more understandable for international public also. Uh, so there was, there was a lot of work there. Uh, I'm very happy that we did it. Uh, I don't know whether all the authors will agree that the work was useful for them, but I think that it was very useful for the volume. Uh, and I think I don't know, uh, you know, uh, how colleagues who are, will read it, you know, from from cover to cover, whether they will agree that it actually can be read as uh, as volume. It's not only a collection of articles which kind of roughly suited each other, but they are more, more disjoint, but we're really trying to make, make it in a way that you can really learn something new if you, if you read everything. You will not learn in depth about uh, history of philosophy or about history of chemistry, uh, but you will learn something about the Polish-German relations. Uh, so it was also, it is also a book which is rather for historians and historians of science, specialized in their discipline. Uh, so, history and specialized in their disciplines, hopefully we'll learn something new also in single chapter, but historians will learn hopefully a lot of new reading everything. Uh, so I hope that we would manage to make it a book and uh, not a, really forgetting how it's a uh, conference proceeding. I hope it's not a conference proceeding, I hope it's really, it really reads as a volume. And it, it doesn't very happy that it does. Congratulations once again on, on finalizing this project. <laughs> that, yeah, I think it, it looks really nice. Yeah, the cover. Yeah. <laughs> so um, thank you very much. I would like to thank you, Stina and Zaur, uh, for joining us and Jan for cooperation. And please do join us for further events. There will be also other events. And if you have uh, books and projects to present, we are also very happy to host. 
as using their suit, their suit in our service. So please do contact us. Thanks again and see you next time.